All praises to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Racha Kodash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that were well laid in the word and doctrine. Shalom and peace. May that be unto the elect of the nation of Israel. This is 2 Chronicles 21, the son of verse 17. And they came in, came up into Judah and break into it and carried away all the substance that was found in the king's house and his sons also and his wives so that there was never a son left him save Jehoahaz, the youngest of his sons. And after all this, the Lord Yahweh smote him in his bowels with an incurable disease. Right, so that's to say what? All these diseases, all these pestilences come from the Heavenly Father. Now, if you ask a bugged out Christian, they will tell you, or it's, you know, it's Satan. Yeah, through Satan is how all these things happen. When who's in control of Satan? Now, if you've got, if there's an adversary, right, you can say, all right, that's, you know, that's a demon. That's a, if you look up that word, uh, an, an unclean spirit. But ultimately, who sent that? The Heavenly Father, man. Just like this new thing, you know, the thing that's going on, this whole thing that had the that the planet on lockdown. Yeah, this is coming from the Heavenly Father, man. You can search up the word disease. You can also search up pestilence. This is Matthew 24, verse 7. It says, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Now, the Lord is not going to take these plagues away, man. Let's get that. So this is 2nd Ezra 16 and 13. And we believe we're in the last times. You know, according to prophecy, according to, well, the current events, yeah, current events that line up with that prophecy. 2nd Ezra chapter 16, verse 13. For strong is his hand that bendeth the bow, his arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. Behold, the plagues that are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. So it's not like you're just going to have this little plague and then it's going to sort of stay there for two minutes. You know, everyone's going to pray and it's going to go away. And we really shouldn't be praying against this disease. You know, that, that might sound like a weird thing to some, uh, common sense to others. Now, should we pray for protection? You know, for us to not get it? Of course. Yeah, you might not want a certain person to get it. All right, cool. But the whole thing of the plague itself being upon this earth was according to prophecy. So if you're doing that, really, you're praying against prophecy. You have to realize the time we're in. Well, we're praying for protection and really for the hastening of all these things. Yeah, we're praying for more pestilences. Is it because we're evil, because we're wicked? No, it's because we understand these things have to come to, to pass before the, the full end, yeah, where we get our kingdom. Yeah, really, it's Yahweh Shai's kingdom that we are then co heirs for. Daniel 7 and 18, But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. And you know, while I'm here, a quick point. In fact, that's one yeah, that I just saw. I didn't see it, but it reminded me of, I think it's Sirach 11 and 14. It says, Prosperity and adversity, life and death, poverty and riches come of the Lord. Now, if, you're, if you've got a pestilence, that's some adversity. So we're saying, well, all adversity comes from the Lord, except these diseases, these pestilence, these pestili, pestilences. And while I'm here, you know, just this quickly, Genesis 16 and 10 this is a completely different topic. <laughs> Come on, man. Genesis 16 and 10. And the angel of Yahweh said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. Now, this is not a new thing. You know, we've dealt with this in Revelation, the 12th chapter, dealing with the word sperma. You know, the word Zerai in, the, in uh, Genesis, I believe the third chapter, they're talking about the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. This is nothing new. All you've done is found it in, the sa like in a different place, the same concept. So let's look at the word seed. You know, first in Hebrew, Zerai. What does it say? Seed, sowing, offspring. Right. So ultimately, the Zerai comes from the man, it goes into the woman's womb, and then she gives birth. You know, so you can say it's her seed in terms of it's her offspring. But who put the sperma in there? Who put the seed in there? The man. And, the, and this is coming from people that are trying to claim, oh, you can be an Israelite through your mother. All right, so let's say your dad is an Ishmaelite. Now, your dad's an Edomite, <clears throat> and your mum's an Ishmaelite. Can you pick and choose and say, well, yeah, I'd actually rather choose my lineage through my mother. Yeah, I want to be an Ishmaelite today. 
because I don't want to get the judgment of E. Or maybe you're feeling really haughty one day. You know what? Fuck it. Today I'm an Edomite. You know, what is it? Your, um, your national fluid. It's basically gender fluid doctrine. Now, if you can choose, pick and choose, well, this comes from your mother, this comes from that. And if you're saying, well, no, it doesn't, it comes from your mother's father. Well, what's so significant about your mother's father? Why not your father? Or your father's father? They're like the scriptures talk about. Well, really, it's just a bugged out doctrine, man. I'm trying to find excuses because you don't believe, uh, is, or I don't know what you believe, but you believe it's unlikely or somewhat that you're going to look, you're going to have a pale skinned person that's actually an Israelite. So the way you, which, um, the guy's grandfather you know, is, is pale skinned. Now, could he be a Jake? Absolutely. Absolutely. When you've got that doctrine, you have to try and fucking merge it. When you make it all about skin color. Oh no, my, my, uh, my dad's dad's white, but I'm, I'm going to choose to trace my lineage through my mother. Absolute confusion. Absolute confusion. That's a feminist doctrine. You know, the, the womb, <laughs> the womb man is effectively overpowering the actual seed. You know, seed, when it talks about a woman having seed, it's talking about her having offspring. Uh, which is what? The outcome of a man's sperma fertilizing her egg and then her giving birth to the seed. The seed is, comes from what? It's a masculine attribute. It comes from the man. Seed, sowing offspring, a sowing seed, semen varietal, offspring, descendants, posterity, children. That's what it's talking about when it talks about the woman's seed. In Revelation, the 12th chapter, the, that woman is Israel, truly. And on a macro level, it's Israel. On a microcosm, you can say it's well, Mary is clearly his mother, but that was talking about the nation of Israel bringing forth that child. So it says, offspring, descendants, posterity, children of moral quality, a practitioner of righteousness, sowing time. So the brothers went into this, went into the, um, the what do you call it, the Septuagint, and went, oh my gosh, look, see, it's the word sperma. Now you're going to get the exact same thing, from which a plant germinates, Right, so the child germinates from the man's seed, right? The seed, i.e. grain or kernel, which contains within itself the germ of future plants, right? And that's what it is. It's the seed. The seed comes from the man, and that's why we trace it patrilineally, because all of the, it contains everything that you need for the future plants, right? That's why the man has sperm. Stop it with this. Of the grains or kernels sown, metaphor, a seed, i.e. residue, or a few survivors reserved as the germ of the next generation, just as seed is kept from the harvest for the sowing. The semen varietal, the product of this semen, seed, children, offspring, progeny. Stop being simple, man. And we've got we've explained that for Revelation, the 12th chapter. We've explained that for Genesis 3. And now you've just found another place that says seed. We're not going to change what we've been saying. There is that. All right, family, tribe, posterity, whatever possesses vital force or life-giving power. Of divine energy of the Holy Spirit operating within the soul by which we are regenerated. Right, so the sperma. The sperma is male. When that male puts it inside the woman and she has a child, she can say, oh, that's my seed. Yeah, why? Because it's her offspring. But where did the seed come from? The man, still. Right, and this even false doctrine, that comes from the Lord. Okay. All things, it's all spiritual. Let's get that in Wisdom of Solomon and close out there. So Wisdom of Solomon 12 and 1 it says, For thine incorruptible spirit is in all things. Yeah, from, from a false doctrine to a pestilence to someone dying to someone being born. Now all of it. So I'll leave it there. Yeah, sorry, it's a bit all over the place, but I thought, well, while we're recording, let's get this touched upon. Right, so Shalom, on to the next one, Lord willing. All praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakha Kudash. Shalom.